How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Predator Hunters. This is a graphic novel by uh, Dark Horse Comics as all the Alien and Predator stuff is. Um, flip it open to the inside. You get the logo here, really big Predator. Um, and then here's the credits page. Always try to open it up and show you guys that. Uh, credit where credit is due after all. Uh, script by Chris Warner. Art by Francesco Riz Velesco. Uh, lettering by Michael Helser. And cover art by Doug Wheatley. Although, um, quite unfortunately with the covers in this one, uh, they don't have them. This is published, uh, the innards is all the issues straight through with uh, no cover breaks and no indication where each individual issue stops and starts. Um, you have a variant cover gallery in the back, and these are some pretty cool covers. I really do like all this art. However, um, unfortunately... Uh, I can't see the rest of the covers because they didn't include them. And I also don't know where the breaks are. Um, so, yeah, I definitely prefer when they have the covers in there as breaks, but they don't even have them in the back in this one. Oh, well. If you want to know where they all end, like each issue, um, I guess you do get one cover in the beginning. Uh, but it starts at number seven. So, uh each issue is 22 pages, so you can kind of do the math with the page numbers and figure out where all the issues begin and end. Um, but yeah, I, I wish they had those in here. Uh, but anyway, if we flip to the uh, the legal page, um, you can see that this collects uh, Predator Hunters 1 through 5, originally published in May to September 2017. And yeah, there are actually um, two other Hunter's books that I'll get to after this. Uh, and both of them are four issues. So this first one here is uh, five. It's a little thicker and a little uh, more more pages. Uh, but anyway, let's just jump right into the story. Um, I won't spoil anything, but I'll try to go over the basics of the story so you get a, a feel for what this is about, you know, so you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. But I, I won't spoil the ending. Uh, you open up in Texas, uh, this snake pit gas place, and you get this uh, guy, uh, can I focus? There we go. Uh, this guy, he's a Native American and he's talking to his uh, overtly racist boss. Um, to be honest, I, I really wish they hadn't done this. Um, this place, I think it's implied to be Texas, and um, I've lived in Texas all my life and I uh, just want to say that around here this behavior is not considered okay. I know it's a stereotype in Hollywood but uh, we really don't do that down here and I've been here all my life and to be honest when I first read this I thought maybe this book was set in the 60s or something but no it's uh, modern day. But anyway you get this guy um, Nakai, Naki um, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce that, um, but you get these uh, strange and mysterious people coming to visit him at his work. You see, uh, this guy is actually someone from the previous Predator comics. This is from Predator Big Game from 1992, which if you want to read about that, it's collected in the Omnibus Volume 2, Predator Big Game there. Uh, now, you don't have to have read this story. It'll give you a nice little summary. Uh, but it is cool that they're using stuff that's been previously established in Dark Horse Comics. But anyway, this group of people wants him because they're looking for people that have encountered Predators before and they're forming a team of hunters to fight the alien race known for being hunters. So, after a little bit of convincing, he joins in and all of them talk about their journey and how they got there. 
and the main lady is actually a descendant of someone uh, from Predator Nemesis, which is collected in Omnibus 4. Uh, but basically, her family has been hunting predators for generations, and she's taking a bigger, organized approach and trying to really uh, put a dent in the problem and get as many predators as she can. So this is a, a pretty cool uh, character right there. Um, she takes him to the base, which is aboard this uh, really big... Uh, boat and on that boat you meet another one of your main characters this lady who has had some traumatic experience with the predator before but it's left kind of vague and uh, you don't really get all of her story just yet but you see her she's pushing herself doing push-ups and you know working out just all the time ready to fight these predators um, so the really tough uh, serious, ready-to-work lady, and of course, you know, they get into fights with each other, as, uh, you know, uh, people with big personalities might tend to do. Uh, but yeah, their base is aboard this really cool boat. Gotta love a nice, uh, boat base where you can get all your people and stuff. Uh, but anyway, they're going to take a look at, um, the people from the prologue. Uh, you see there's these group of illegal fishers that, uh, crash land on this island and it's one of the remotest places in the world and they of course encounter a predator one of them gets away and he actually rips off one of the predators uh, dreadlocks there and makes it back and of course that story makes it to the ship and now they're going to uh, take a look at this island now find it now the island there's that one they're going to and there's a bigger one nearby um, the bigger one nearby they're going to make themselves known on uh, there's actually people living there there's this uh, doctor from New Zealand and he's kind of turned this place into a uh, sort of refuge he wants to preserve more of the natural way of life and living at peace uh, with nature. So that island is inhabited, but of course, this obviously is a case of, hmm, sounds too good to be true. So you know there's probably something up with this, uh, but what's going on there? Um, now, you get in this one, your pretty cool standard uh, army people, kind of, you know, ready and more prepared than most people are. So this is a big action heavy story and you know hunters versus uh, hunters and you know it does seem cool and big but ultimately for most of it seems pretty standard you know not bad but um, stories we've seen before you know uh, cool rivalry and they're hunting each other but at the end of the day for a lot of it I thought, okay, you know, it's good, but it's not unique. But then you get to the fifth volume, and that last volume really actually does take this place into things that I haven't seen before, you know, and it's that last volume that makes it uh, really unique. And they kind of took their time, and they wrote the story, and they didn't try to rush and cram a bunch into it. So it does kind of feel like, okay, we're going here, we're going to fight them. And it doesn't feel like they're cramming a bunch in and, you know, not trying to put all these layers to stuff. But I think that might be because they probably knew they were going to get a sequel to this. So, you know, do a fun story. Don't try to cram too much into it. And just put more stuff in the sequel, I guess. Um, but yeah, a cool uh, story that really did have a fun twist at the end. Another thing you'll get, if I can find some of the uh, uh, predators in this one, they do a flashback, and you get to see all the the different predators, and then there's the, the island and stuff. But, can you guys see that? Is it too small? But, uh, 
they give each predator his own mass that's unique to him. And I, they had done that in the movies before, but you don't really see the difference as much as you do here. But, like, when you look at the uh, variant cover gallery in the end, you know, you can see there's these masks with the different uh, stripings on them. And that looks very different than this mask. It's got the whole uh, bottom piece cut out of that, so you can actually see the predator's mouth. And that was one thing I really liked. Um, you know, and also the art style is pretty sharp and angular, so... A little bit of a, a manga influence, you know. Uh, everything's pretty, uh, pretty spiky, you know. Uh, so yeah, you can see, you can see it's a, a more modern take on the, the art style, and you know I found that that had quite a bit of life behind it. So it was pretty cool, but it's not the old school style comic book art that you saw in a lot of these Dark Horse stuff. But overall. Fun story with a lot of energy. Um, not the best thing ever, not like revolutionary. A good standard story until the end, and then it had a fun, uh, you know, unique take on it. Um, overall, I found this fun. Um, and I already have uh, Predator Hunters 2, and I'll get to that soon. Uh, but yeah, Hunter vs. Hunter, a pretty uh, unique take, you know, to see some people that are more prepared. Uh, anyway... I'll review the others soon. I'll get to more Alien and Predator comics soon. Um, that being said, uh, I do a comic a week here. So stick around. There'll be more of that. I do cover primarily horror movies, though. So if you like um, if you like horror movies, stick around. There'll be a ton of those. But anyway, to everyone who's watched this far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll put a link to my comics playlist at the bottom here. So if you want to see more of my comics, they'll be there. Anyway, uh, have a good day, and I'll see you guys again very, very soon.